think that um, laughter is the antidote for fear. And so you can, when you're afraid, uh, the laughter breaks the fear. And so what I tried to do in Reanimator was to kind of build some tension and then have a laugh and let the audience blow it off and start cranking it up again. <laughs> We knew that there were certain techniques that we didn't want to use. You know, we knew that we did not want to have uh, a guy with his shoulders built up to here, because what that would do is it would make his arms look like an orangutan. I mean, he would have like these six foot long arms. Uh, we also knew that we couldn't really use a mechanical head because uh, I wanted, the actor had all sorts of dialogue and things that he had to be able to do while, you know, his, you know, in a decapitated form. Most of them were, were stage techniques, uh, but uh, by varying them, I think we kept the audience off balance. You know, they weren't sure exactly how we were accomplishing it all. Oh, Mr. West, I'm actually glad to see you. It saves me the trouble of having to send for you. You'll never get credit for my discovery. Who's going to believe a talking head? Get a job in a sideshow. <laughs> Why, an intelligent young man like yourself should make such a foolish, fatal mistake of coming here to challenge me. Oh, I have a plan. So do I. Animator is, is, uh, has become legendary. It's the classic example of uh, a film on a very low budget, but because it was filled with good ideas, became something extraordinary and, and pushed itself beyond expectations. Quiet! Sit. Action. Now, the reanimator is set to return in a sequel, directed not by Stuart Gordon, who is busy on other projects, but by producer Brian Usner. Uh, battery died. Okay, right away. Although it's a fairly recent film, reanimator is already considered a, a classic of modern horror. Is it a daunting prospect taking on the sequel? Oh, yeah. It's, it, it's, a, it's, it's set up to lose. <laughs> you know, there, how can you win in a situation like this? I'm well aware of that. But on the other hand, I, the way I look at it is the picture that's going to get, it's get, it's getting attention already. There's no doubt, it, unless it's a complete disaster production value-wise, which it's not, it will get, it'll get play. People will go to see it. Bring, bring this fellow in here. Oh, come here a here. second. This is an example of a, of a poor fellow that um, watched too many horror movies. Uh, <laughs> How about the real person? How about the real girl? Can we get her over here? Uh, then we could do him beating the door right now and get that on. Body double? Yeah, body let's see if we can get the body. Do we have any, any girl here that's got kind of white skin? The first one was about reanimating the dead, and this one is about the creation of new life. It's very Frankensteinian and, and, uh, in its overtones and, 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 and gothic. Yeah. But much of the success of the film will, of course, depend on the special effects. Just exactly what new things can John Beekler do with Dr. Hill's head? In Bride of Reanimator, we're doing many variations of the Dr. Hill head. Uh, when we first find Dr. Hill, he's been crushed horribly. He's been squeezed and, and, and disintegrated almost. 
So when we find him in a carnival sideshow, he's got a big dent in his head. Uh, he does, however, go through some reconstructive surgery and is turned into the, the, the nice, smooth, perfect Dr. Hill that we all know and love. But additionally, we get to do some more fun things with him. We, in fact, uh, graft some bat wings onto his head, and he can then fly around uh, and uh, do as much mischief as he'd like. Leave that thing here. Teddy and I go everywhere together. We're best friends. Come on. Not this time, Tootsie. You'll travel faster so. Get you for that. Stuart Gordon, meanwhile, has been hard at work directing other films like From Beyond and this one, The Dolls. about this place? What is it about the, the La Brea Tar Pits? This is a wonderful, you know, first of all, in America, there are very few places that are very old. But here's a place that's millions of years old, but this tar pit has been here forever. And uh, I think it's kind of a it's sort of symbolic of Los Angeles and Hollywood in a way, and that it's this uh, pit where the enormous animals would get brought down and picked apart by little scavengers. So uh, I think there's some symbolic value here as well. What are the things behind us? These are uh, giant land sloths, which uh, I also thought were kind of appropriate so that, you know, I, I can be the third sloth in this group. Uh, but these are, you know, very nice, peaceful animals and, of sort, and of, you know, they minded their own business and are, of course, extinct. So there's a lesson there, too. They weren't suited for life in, in Hollywood. <laughs> they couldn't handle it. Couldn't handle this, the pressure. Dang dang dang, bob bob bob, dang dang ding dong do. Blue moon, blue moon, beep beep beep, moon blue moon blue moon, beep 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 moon. Boy, that was great. <laughs>